This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. Good evening, Jason Glick. What's Good going evening. on in the world of comics in your world? <laughs> uh, well, it's like, glad you asked that, John, because what, as I said that on um, last time, I was going to be thinking about doing like, the uh, best of 2020. List. Well, let's say that due to um, extenuating circumstances, that's going to have to be pushed off to at least um, next time because, like, I'm I'm denied access to a lot of my a lot of my stash right now. Okay. So, in the meantime, it's like I'm going to uh, I'm going to be talking about one something else that I've re- that I've read recently because we're going back to that like, other inexhaustible well that well of like Osamu Tezuka works by Osamu Tezuka. Hmm. Yeah, because we because I'm um, vertical. Um, who has just made? Who have made a um, great, great career out of uh, republishing his like his, his back his back library, have also gone and republished. Um, that's right, republished um, one of one of um, Tezuka's um, like um, works that have, was originally published in English a while back. I'm talking about a message to Adolf, the story of of Adolf Hitler and two other two other kids named Adolf during World War II. Now, Adolf little, in Japan? No, not quite. It's like this. Yeah, cause this is um, like I said, it's it's a story of three three like I said, three people named Adolf and the, and the ties that bind that bind them, as well as one Japanese man. More on him in a bit. Now, this story was originally published by Viz way back in the day. I mean, we're talking like early '90s here, back when like they were just they're, they're just starting out here, and also like it was originally published in several graphic not in five graphic novels. What's interesting though is that well. Is that um, this is so early to the point that uh, you know in order to get this into bookstores, Viz had um, Viz produced these five volumes with photo covers, you know, pictures of people, you know, just you know, in, like like, in, like posing and stuff, you know, some quite, semi relevant to the uh, to the material. Um, basically, in the sense that you don't trick them into thinking that you know this isn't really you know this seems like a respectable book, not like one of those you know comic books and all. So, so this is. And it's also published as part of their Cadence um, graphic um, graphic novel line, um, which you know it's like if you're like you know my my generation, then yeah, you may remember this. I mean, this is obscure obscure stuff by any any um, English manga manga standard. Still though, um, I it's like I read read, read these um, in their original form because a, because a friend of mine was able to pick um, was dedicated enough to try and um, track them all down, and I was and I and I remember being impre- impressed by them when. After reading them, because it struck me as being more, a lot more serious and um, straight faced than I was accustomed to seeing from from Tezuka, who at that time, you know, I think I just you know read some black some Black Jack, some Master Boy, and not a lot of his his um his serious um later era work, such as um Otakira Hito and um and Barbara. Now, Esther Adolf though is all, is also one of his is one of his um later works, it's the last works he. Probably one of the last works he produced before his death, and as I said, it's a story of three three people named named Adolf. Um, like you know, got Hitler. Then you've also got um, Adolf Adolf Kauf, Kaufman, a um, half Japanese, half German boy, and um, Adolf Camille, a Jewish, it's like the son of son of two Jewish people, um, members of the Jewish Kobe, Kobe Jewish society. Um, both 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 Caucasian, for lack of a better word. Who, I'm living in. Like living in Japan, and they're living in Japan. Now, story now, and but it's also the story of one one Japanese man named Sohei Toge. He's a he's a, he's a journalist working for one of Japan's largest newspapers who comes into um, winds up being embroiled in a um, it's like you know, it's like in a, in a far in a in a scheme in a spy scheme by his by his younger brother who was um who from America they has communist party leanings. His brother gets his hands on some really juicy information. Proof that Hitler, who um at the time of the story story opens in the in the nineteen thirties, um has basically um you know building his base in, in Germany, that that Hitler um actually has um Jewish blood. He's descended from Jewish people. Now this this marks this um this marks one of the um like one of the big things for for the book that um it it brings in a lot of um see a lot of stuff from that era a lot of um historical rumors and facts like um from from that era this thing about Hitler being Hitler having Jewish blood is one of them now like he now, now Toge get, get winds up getting involved get getting involved in his brother's scheme and um winds up and um and also like winds up in in possession of these papers for for a time before they. Before they eventually come out of his grasp, and out, and um, then there's all this fun stuff going on. Now, thing is, like, though, 
the most more cynical reader may imagine that you know it's like this that you know to have Toge here with, with this um fight side story about you know Hitler's um lineage is kind of just more of an excuse to allow, allow this to tell this the real story here, which is the story between um like um Ka- um Adolf Kaufman and Camille. Now this is interesting because um compared that because if, if I'm not mistaken these are the two these are. Pro- of all of Tezuka's works that I've, that I've been published in English so far, these represent the, um, the only two Caucasian leads that he that he has, and it's within it that Tezuka decides to explore the um, it's like the the right it's like like the wide ranging um, like a, right, right, wide ranging repercussions of having it's like of uh, it's like of um, forcing forcing ideology upon children how they can. But how they respond to like to, to their to choices made in their up, upbringing? Because Kaufman, I mean, his dad's um, one, his dad's an like one of the a foreign dignitary and like I'm working in. Uh, he's a German foreign dignitary in Japan. He married a Japanese woman, but he's also um, he's also loyal. He's also a loyal Nazi as well. And when I'm worried about like these papers that contain um, truth about Hitler's origin gets out, like he winds up being one of the key people involved in trying to secure them. Now. Uh, Kaufman, you know, not, knowing nothing, not being indoctrinated to the, to this, he like he he grows up being friends with 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 Adolf Camille, and yeah, it's like they, there's this um there's this, like you no know, childhood thing where like you know he hears about they hear about this thing that like, you know like, like you know Hitler says like Jew, Jews are like um, lower lower races and they fight they fight a bit, but they still grow up to be great um great friends, and even when even after um the death of Kaufman's father, um he says that he's going to send him off to um Germany to become a proper to, to make sure he's raised right, become a proper German. It's like he realizes that it, they, they both swear to become friends. But that's when the series, that's when things get really interesting, and we see that, and we see um Kaufman's um like uh, um indoctrination for lack of a better word, because you know he's just he's still just a kid. He's not able to like, you know stand to really like stand against like you know these, these adults like forcing this ide- ideology upon him. And they and it's like he's and even though he struggles to um, deal with this. Like he also, he also has to come face. He also has like starts, starts to, starts to come around to this to face their constant impression, and it also leads to some tragic circumstances when he kills um someone very dear to to um Camille. It's like when he's when he's in, in Germany. But then um at but then as things go on, it's like even as he struggles with this, you start to understand like how he could succumb to this this kind of thinking. Because then after he um winds up um taking taking out a um like a, a Chinese spy on his on a train one time, it's like I mean, come like he's um, brought to um, he's brought to Hitler's attention, um, and basically raised up his like you know kind of, Hitler makes him his like his personal valet, and so he gets like this front row seat to um Germany's triumphs, like in the late in the late thirties, and showing them like you know had, he gets first he gets first hand tour of France, um sees sees Hitler um taking out the uh, like the monument that Fr- the French built to um their to, to, to like to Germany's surrender at world, in World War One, um, Germany's um, like tri- um, massacre of the English at Dunkirk. It's like it's one of those. I mean, he it's it, you, you see him like he's he's brought to like these highest levels, and you see, you see him really become starstruck by this. You know, just like and he, I can really start to buy. He, you should really start to see how he how it would be really plausible for him to buy into all this stuff, all this um German like all the, all these not all the, the Nazi doc, doctrination and, and anti-Semitism as well. It's like it's. And like I said, that's 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 one of the strongest parts of this of this two volume series. Just seeing how just seeing Coff, um, Coffin's transformation from this you know this, this nice kid into this into this um, driven Nazi who want who who completely buys into everything and like and becomes becomes a good mem- good member of the Gestapo as well. Now, this, now and the, and that continues though like what, from his adult. Because like once you see how we could like completely buy into all this stuff, once Germans' fortunes, Germany's fortunes start taking a turn, that's when um, things get really interesting, and you start to see, um, and you start to see him like um, start to grapple with these with a lot of things. Chief among them being Hitler's um, mental instability, because after he after his um, the attempt on, on Hitler's attempt on his, on his life, I believe this is the same one documented in the uh, in the Tom Cruise film Valkyrie. Like Hitler starts. Starts really, starts really freaking, freaking out. Even suspects Kaufman of, it's like a, a, of treason as well. And when, when he's um, um, 
when he declines in order to um to kill um oh, what was that that one guy oh Rommel the uh, head of the Af- former head of the Afri corpse like because he's because Rommel's realized that hey you know like Hitler's Hitler's a fool it's like I don't want to serve this guy anymore it's like he's he's essentially essentially demoted to um to being being one of the uh, being one of the S- um one of the guys managing the um, processing the German the Jews to the uh, to the concentration camps, and it's like it's this is through, through Camille that um, Tezuka shows a, shows the that gives this is giving the audience like a first hand look at the um, at the German war machine and it's like and their and their it's like, and their processes and it's like it's like in the war as well. It's like I realize it's like you know it's going to be a lot of this stuff isn't going to be new to all the readers, but at the same time you got to I think you got to consider that this is that um, for for the time of, for the time it was published, I mean, I, I can't imagine a lot of Japanese stuff that went that actually went into this kind of detail. So I mean, it's like it's it does it does kind of serve as a primer to to a lot of this to a lot, lot of Ger- to a lot of German Germany's uh, standards and standards of practices at the time. And if you're not familiar with this, then this then then you should buy this book just for that just for that reason. To understand what what they're up to. Tezuka also. It's like also um, has some has some fun with the U-boats, the Germans' U-boats, um, when um, when Kaufman has to make a trip back to Japan to try and track, make a final attempt to track down these Hitler, these papers detailing Hitler's origins. We get a nice um, like tense um, like sub battle. It's like um, straight out of um, Wolfgang Peterson's Das Boot, and also at the same time, um, Kaufman like comes face to face with all with all the horrors he's committed while driving while riding along there. Now it's. And it, and eventually, yeah, Kaufman does come back to Japan. He winds up hooking up with 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 Camille, and um, they were and yeah, it's like they were um, like they they start to reconnect as friends. But then, but you know, Kaufman's indoctrination is just too strong to like you know to to overcome. And then you've got um, the fact that that Camille has um essentially become engaged to the uh, um the Jew, Jewish girl that he made an attempt to save um back back in Germany and. You know, it's like that. They may have been, they may have been able to be friends. You know, even in spite of their, in spite of Kaufman's indoctrination, they. But you know, just the fact that you know that that uh, um, Camille um like winds up not not intentionally um like um marry um marrying his girl. That you know that that's the point of no return right there. And it's but it's really the core like the core story between these two, like these two individuals that forms the. Uh, forms like the real the core narrative of the like of the story just, and it's like it's testament to us like Tezuka's humanism that he's showing you just like you know the characters at it's like as they are it's like just you like tell, telling a very human story especially after like after World War II when um when Camille uh, and and goes off goes off to is goes off to um participate in the founding of Israel and um Kaufman like you know hunted by all the uh, all the Jews that he uh, by by the Jewish establishment for his war crimes winds up hooking up with the um, Palestinian Liberation Front so so it just shows you that you know just like how it's like you know how this just like how the tides of hate can just say can continue can uh, manifest and continue with, like th- throughout the years in different in different forms if no one if no one's around to do, to do the right thing now Essentially, it's like the person in, who was relegated really to that task in this story would be would be Sohei Toge. Now, the thing is with Toge is that you know it's, it starts. He, it's like Toge. It's like he's an he's an interesting interesting character in the sense that you know it's like he's the kind of the, he starts off as the crusading journalist, but then he also suffers so many tribulations that he winds up being almost like the uh, the um, equivalent to Job in this story for all that he all that he goes through. It's like, and it, and at some point, yeah, it does become a bit ridiculous, especially the extended chase scene in the first volume, where he, where he's constantly, um, like eluding both both his captors and, and people even want to help him in order to track down the, uh, like the mis- the papers um regarding Hitler's lineage that have gone, on. it's like that have gone missing, and it's like even, and it's like it does kind of um does kind of be, get to be ridic- a little bit ridiculous after a point, and and again, it's like it does. Initially, it could seem that you know, like Toge is just mainly there to provide a Japanese point of view. You know, that's as if um, you know, like that this like the Japanese wouldn't completely buy into this story without like a Japanese protagonist protagonist leading the way. But then, um, after he winds up um encountering um, a, um Adolf Camille's mom, um, Adolf Kaufman's mom, and she loans him one yen, begins a connection there that for, 
between between the two that that eventually um ties his ties his arc into the story like into the story proper. It's like in that, and so it's like if that's that's really te- that's a testament to um to the Tezuka's um, like storytelling skill right check right there that he can weave in the ascent this essentially essentially um, extraneous storyline into the it's like into the plot at, plot at large and in a fairly fairly natural fashion. I mean, yeah, it's like there are parts where Tezuka lays it's like lays the sentiment on a bit it's like a bit thick and uh, like there are also like some like I said the um some of the, uh, the some of the chase scenes and the police drama with with Toge King and a bit rich and also he even loses his hearing at, later on but he doesn't quite lose his hearing because he's still able to hear some people depending on the situations it's kind of it's kind of confusing but still it's like it's like Adolf Mr. T. Adolf also represents um Tezuka at, at some of his most stripped stripped down as well. It's like he's not doing a lot of his comedy traditional comedy stuff. And yes, there is there are some like brief like um nods to that right in like in these two volumes that they're but they're kept to a minimum as well. Like even the um like the, the Tezuka cast is kind of knocked down to two characters um in you know Asseltine Lamp who um is the German um it was a German Gapo officer who tries to um, get down the get the uh Excuse me. Get the uh, like the papers on like get, get the um, papers about Hitler's lineage from from Toge. and then the ver- in the second volume he also pay- he also plays a um, very key role in second like, trying to it's like in um, basically um, deserving a bit of um, karmic justice to Hitler um, as a, um, due to it's like due to his lineage. It's like and he also got the um, the crazy um, the, the um, crazy military policeman who hounds. Um, like um, Toge throughout most of the first volume and a little bit of the second. He's one of Tezuka's regular cast members as well, but they're the only ones like who make the uh, tra- transition from his regular works here. Still, though, it's like, it's like even with its, it's like, even though it can be, like I said, can lay things on, lay things on a bit thick. It's like it's um, message. To, both volumes message to Adolf present a compelling do present a compelling story of hum. It's like it's like a. a it's like of of um, man's struggle in order to um, it's like you know, nah, what am I saying here? It's like they're it's like they're both they're both just they're both kind of a compelling struggle of man's okay, of how man responds to the uh to the like ha, tch, tch. let me let me think let me think this through. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this, I swear to God. It's like just showing you how it's like how the cho- how the choices and impressions made on us as kids. It's like going to define our define our lives as, as adults. And even then, it's like you know, once we make it, a, once we're set in our ways as adults, it's just sometimes it's not possible to change. And um, thing things just and things can go things can go out of control there and lead, lead to tragedy as well. But still, even then, it's like there's still the chance to take to pull, to to leave to leave a message. That will so that will hopefully like inspire kids, take kids later generations or other people like, to not not make not perpetrate, perpetrate the same the same things that were done done here. It's, it, it's not Tezuka's absolute best work, but it's but certain but it's certainly one of the certainly comp- one of his one of his compelling one of his most compelling, and I'm highly recommended for any for any fan who likes who it's like who for any Tezuka fan it's like to have to have in their library. Sounds like this is the part where you say, John, your comments? <laughs> That's right. Well, I found it a little interesting, but um, I might I might go and pick it up. Um, uh, interesting uh, alternate history, if you will, a little bit. I don't know. Is it is it an alternate history? Not really. I mean, yeah. the... Hit the um, Jewish blood is something that I've heard rumored before. About- yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's been rumored, and you know, and I'm, you know, it's kind of a strange thing, but it might fuel, you know, people theorize that it might fuel his ant, well, fueled his anti-Semitic like views for some reason. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's yeah, that that's one of the key things. Like, Hitler, I was like, hit this, it hit his portrayal of Hitler in this in this series is actually. Um, like sympathetic without without denying the fact that he's a complete monster. Right. Like, so. I mean, you've got Hitler, um, just like you know, like just doing these monstrous monstrous things, but also just like realizing that he was he was very like he was very disturbed and also like generally very alone, like with apparently like, apparently only like see Tezuka um, describe it. Um, 
Braun was his only companion throughout, like the only person who really understood him throughout the uh, throughout the war. It's like everyone else was just kind of like you know either like son or just like someone just you know hoping to get power by hanging out around him. And that was another thing I was. It's kind of an interesting perspective to write from the German kid's point of view. Yeah, it's like it's like I say it's it's like I said, it's different, but I also guess I did you know like Tezuka just wanted to show you just like you know how this stuff how this stuff affects <laughs> right because you know what have has anyone thought of it before right yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's like it's like I said it's it's probably <laughs> I'm guessing probably but it's good to be reminded that yeah you know it wasn't just a bunch of buildings that were just you know it, it was their entire nation including their citizens willing or not by the way mm-hmm so <laughs> hmm. interesting yeah it sounds like something that uh, might want to read actually so yeah, and the, the, both of them are easily viable by covers from Peter Mendelssohn because you've got first of all you've got like basically like a normal normal Hitler Hitler face. Second of all, you've got crazy Hitler face. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, about to wrap it up for our podcast tonight. Yeah, it's like, and hopefully, it's like, like in all likelihood, we'll be um we'll be doing the um, best of 2012 next um next week. So. Cross your fingers there. Yep. Okay. We'll uh, catch you next time on Comet Picks by the Glick. Right. Later. Bye.